The tools you will require for a bolt hinged installation are a Flexco punch and wrench, the correct size for the fastener you'll install, two Flexco bolt breakers, a claw hammer, a 32 ounce hammer, and a curved template for the belt width and fastener size you'll be using. For this splice, we'll be using a size 530 curved template as our guide for a hole punching and proper fastener alignment. While it can also be used as a guide for making the proper curved cut in the belt ends, we'll be using the Alligator Series 400 curved belt cutter because it makes cutting a clean, precisely curved belt end easier and safer. Before starting, we'll make sure that the conveyor is locked out and that all other safety precautions are followed according to the safety checklist. We'll start the bolt hinged installation with measuring the belt as usual, then cutting curved belt ends with the Alligator Series 400 curved belt cutter. We'll use the curved belt cutter exactly the same as the Series 300 wide belt cutter, except for aligning the blade indexes. Because we're cutting a curved belt end, we'll align the blade indexes only on both ends of the cutting line. Bolt hinged fasteners require this concave or curved belt end to distribute operating tensions evenly across the splice, reducing the potential for splice edge failure. Fastener size is based on belt thickness, minimum pulley diameter, and the belt's mechanical fastener rating. Our belt is 17 30 seconds of an inch thick and 30 inches wide, so we'll be using number 550 bolt hinged fasteners. We'll place a solid working surface under the belt end, then place the curved template over the belt end, center it, and nail it in place with the double headed nails that come packaged with the bolts. Spray the holes in the template with Flexco silicone spray to make hole punching easier then punch all the holes. Speed tools such as the power punch are used when shorter installation times are desirable. Both speed tools, the power punch and wrench, must be used with an impact tool equipped with a Flexco quick change chuck. After all the holes are punched, remove the template. We now have two options. Bolt hinged fasteners are available in either continuous single piece strips, the correct length for standard belt widths, or as bulk fasteners in one, two, or three plate fastener sets depending on size. The fastener strips make installation faster and ensure a straight splice. Bulk fasteners may be used when joining non-standard width belts or when greater joint flexibility is needed for deep troughing idlers. When using bulk fastener sets, use the chart in the F300 catalog to order the correct number of recommended fastener sets for your belt width. When installing fastener strips, place one on the belt end with the stamped Flexco name and size number facing up. Align the bolt holes in the belt with those in the strip and assemble the bolts and nuts by pushing the bolt through the holes in the fastener and the belt, making sure the bolt head engages the lugs in the bottom fastener plate. Start the nuts on the bolts by hand. When using hand tools, it's faster to turn the nuts down as far as possible by hand. When installing bulk fastener sets, there are two methods of holding the fasteners in proper alignment on the belt end, clips and gauge pin, or the aligning holder. With either method, we'll first place the fasteners on the belt end. The recommended combination of number 550 fastener sets is a 550 three-plate set on each edge with single-plate 550 fasteners between them. Assemble the bolts and nuts through the fasteners and belt. Remember to engage the bolt head with the lugs in the bottom fastener plate and run the nuts down by hand until about one eighth inch of the bolt extends through the top of the nut. This three plate fastener set placement is recommended with 550 bulk fasteners to give greater strength to the splice edges. When using the clip and gauge pin method, we'll place the clips on the fasteners as we insert the gauge pin. Use one clip centered on the three plate fasteners and with single plates, 
straddle two fasteners with one clip. When using the aligning holder, first turn the nuts down by hand as tight as possible. Then unlock the cam pin and turn it up. Mesh the holder with the fastener loops. Insert the gauge pin and turn the cam pin down so its handle is parallel to the belt and lock it in place. The aligning holder can also be used in place of the curved template. When installing bulk fastener sets, we'll insert Flexco lock tape between the fastener plates and the belt by cutting a length of tape slightly longer than the belt width, then cut a point on one end and thread it with the curl towards the belt between the fastener plates and the belt. The Flexco lock tape will prevent belt ripple and make inserting hinge pins easier. Insert tape between both top and bottom plates and the belt. To hold the tape in place, push and hold it tight against the bolts and tighten one fastener in the center, then one on each edge. Now we'll tighten the rest of the fasteners. Remember, we can shorten installation time by using speed tools. In this case, the power wrench. While tightening the nuts, make sure the fastener teeth penetrate the bottom of the belt and that the top cover puckers behind the top plates so nothing will catch under them. With the gauge pin in place, use the Flexco bolt breakers to break off the excess bolts. Push the bolt breakers down, tight on the nuts, and bend the bolt ends back and forth in short motions until they break off. We'll make sure the bolt breakers are down tight on the nuts before each bend so that all of the excess bolt is broken off. We're using two bolt breakers to give us better leverage and to help hold the belt in place while we work. Once all of the excess bolt ends are removed, grind or peen the bolt ends flush with the nuts. Remove the gauge pin, gauge pin and clips when installing bolt fasteners, and insert the plastic filler tube by cutting a piece slightly longer than the splice width. Then slip one end over the tip of the gauge pin and insert the tube with the gauge pin through the fastener loops. Then remove the gauge pin. Repeat the installation on the other belt end. Mesh the fastener loops together and insert the hinge pin. To complete the splice, notch the edges of the trailing belt end. When we're not certain of which belt end will be the trailing end, we'll notch both ends. This notch should be three times as long as it is wide. And to keep the nylon-covered hinge pin from migrating, we'll crimp on hinge pin retaining washers.